Okay. So what are you doing today, Seth? Going to quickly and effectively reseal a cylinder in the same day. So we have the seals already. You've got seals? Got seals. So I'm just going to put it together and so where, did the the where did the seals come from? Marshall from Digger for a Day. Ah, okay. Yeah. And he originally... So what's, what's the suspected damage? Well, we thought the damage was in this part here of the rod. Although, Rod noticed that the stroke limit, when it's retracted, doesn't actually interfere with the wiper or the rod seal in the gland nut, so it shouldn't cause any damage. Okay, what's the gland nut look like? Dirty, so it's going to need a good clean. The seals look relatively alright, but... Mm. Oh. But normally you'd measure everything, but yes. you actually have a seal kit. Yes. Okay. So, seals are off. Seals are off, all been removed. And I just want you to explain to me what all these individual parts are and what role they play yep. and where they fit and where oh. you got them out from. Okay. All right? In the, the most logical order. So All right. This is the gland nut. Goes over so what's that the, group. What is a what's a gland nut? What does a gland nut do? The so the gland barrel. nut fits in there. All right. Okay. So it has to seal the oil from leaking out on this side, right? Yep. And how does it do that? Well, what it does is you have this thing here. Called no, no, not the rod seal. The what? How does the gland nut stop oil leaking out through the oh, well, inside of the barrel? Oh, well, there's an O-ring and a backup. Okay, all right. All right, so this is the gland nut, right? Yep. And the gland nut fits into the end of the barrel. And then you've got this part here. Which locks the gland nut Which holds place. the gland nut from coming out, all right? So you've got... Tell me what you got it here. You got a backup ring. All right. Which... What's special about this backup ring? What can you tell me about this backup ring? Uh, it just keeps the O-ring in place when it's right. pressurising oil. What else is special about this backup ring? If you look carefully. Well, it's got a nice little groove on one side, so it holds the O-ring in place. All right. So it supports the O-ring better. Yes. All right. Where does the backup ring go? The backup ring always goes to the the non-pressure side of the gland nut, which right. is to the rear of the, okay. so further to the front of the gland nut. All right, so this O-ring and this Back backing ring. ring go in this groove here. Yep. So it will prevent oil pressure in here leaking between the barrel wall and the outside of the, and the, outside of the gland nut. So on the inside of the gland nut, all right, so where's the rod? You have a rod. So you've got a rod. Alright. So you've got so you've got a rod that moves in and out. Okay? So what prevents oil leaking out through here? So what have we got? Uh, you have a series of seals and protectors. Well, and wear what bands. else? A wear band. So tell me about the wear band first. What's the wear band? So the do? wear band pretty well protects the rod, the clear, the interference between the rod. You always you always get your interference and clearance, clearance mixed up. All right? The clearance in between the rod and the yeah. gland nut. All right. So it prevents. What does it? What prevents does it, metal on metal contact? Metal to metal contact. So what it does? Just show me what it does. So <clears throat> when you have your wear band in, it actually that's so that's without a wear band. That's metal to metal contact. It wouldn't take very long for you to destroy the rod if you didn't have a, a wear band in. Right. Okay. In your gland so nut. the wear band does what? It, it protects it protects the rod and the gland nut by taking up the clearances. Yes. Yes. Between metal the rod, metal. yeah, yeah, and the gland nut, yeah, and that fits in that groove in there. Yes. All right. Okay. Generally, it's to the back of the gland nut. All right. You'll find it. What else? What else? 
Is that the only material these are made from? What other material have you seen these made from? So this is like a synthetic composite material. What other materials? They make them out of Teflon as well. And what else? And call me out there. <laughs> There's another one. I'm not sure exactly what it is. What do we call it? Starts with a G. I know what it is. A G something bush. What's it called? Oh, a glacier bush. Glacier bush. Yeah. And what's that made out of? What's a glacier bush made out of? A white metal yeah. material or... Right. Uh, yeah. So these can be made out of a composite synthetic material or or even a metal. But yep. the metal ones, you actually press them in. These are these are actually flexed in. All right? Yes. So you got the web band. What else do you have? So what actually stops the oil leaking out? And what pressurizes the whole cylinder so that you can actually lift your component, like you can lift your bucket. This is like the mo oh, one this of the is, most important seals. The, the, so the wear band works on the retract side to stop when oil comes in here. Yes. All right. Oil comes into here and then fills this side yeah, of the barrel up. That's right. Yeah. So inside here we've got pressure. All right. Because we've got a piston here, which we'll get to in a minute. All right. So, so the piss, the, the rod seal. So this is, what's this? This is a rod seal. All right, so where does the rod seal go? The rod seal always. So if you've got the front of your gland nut and the rod is pushing out this direction. Yep. This piss, this rod seal with yep. the groove in it yes. must be facing the opposite direction. So, so this big thing here goes in there. Goes inside the gland nut. How do you get this into that gland nut? Uh, persistence <laughs> and um, lubrication All right. definitely. Is and the what's way to get what's there. the important thing about when you install these? Uh, is the grooves in first of all the grooves inside have to be spotless. You need to polish them up, which we'll get to after. Yep. And you have to be. It's got to be lubed, really All lubed right. up with. Does this need grease. to go in a special way? Uh, yes, it does. The, which way? So this which is the pressure side of the rod seal needs to be going in the opposite direction. It's trying to, best way to describe it. Um, it's going to be facing the back of the barrel. So, so this ways. has to face the pressure, basically. This takes the pressure. Is that correct? Yes. Yes? So this always has to face, this has to go in that way. If you put it Not in the other way. way, it won't do anything at It'll all. It'll leak. So, correct? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. All right, what else? And I'll add to that, if your rod is damaged... Yes. Um, ...severely, there's no way this will seal oil either. All right, that's why these, this why these are usually made out of a hardened steel and then they're coated with chrome. a hard chrome, yeah? To prevent corrosion. But as you can see here, there's some pretty nasty damage here. All right? But we've already concluded that it doesn't actually this the rod let's put that on the shaft doesn't actually come so all it only away. goes to about about there and it stops yeah so but if it was to come to here oil would be able to leak past and more importantly with continuous in and out what's it, what's it going to do to the seal it's just going to destroy it chew it out just chew it out yep so. all right so what else? And let's As you can in. see, it's quite gritty and dirty. So what's the other thing that, what other thing is important? Um, keeping the barrel, obviously. So first of all, you want to polish the barrel with as best as you can with this a sandpaper. This is what I'm talking about. What's this here? Paper. Oh, the wiper seal. Okay. okay. So wiper so seal. So what's a wiper seal? Wiper do? seal is prevention of <clears> dust <throat> and contaminants in, into the inside of the gland nut. Okay. How does it do that? So it has a light wiper that angles down which squeezes on the rod so just show us how it works so, this one's pretty destroyed but you can see there that, that so this will that lip is what theoretically pick up and remove any dust mud water or contaminants yeah so this is meant to do what to prevent Purely all this from seal out getting in yeah. and annoying the rod seal. Yeah. Correct? Because if we get water and dust and mud into here, what happens? 
just fills up and destroys the rod seal. Yep. And then oil and will then carry through yeah. to the rest of the cylinder. So the other thing it does is create all this corrosion in there. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually half cleaned out. It was way okay. worse than that. Next. Okay, so Tell me about your piston. We're moving to the piston. All right, so move these out of the way. So what's special about this piston? This creates the movement of what you're pushing and pulling in your cylinder. So the oil travels... The oil, so the oil... On a cylinder, the oil can travel both directions, only at once. Uh, so when oil is, tra is pressurised through this port, it will push this piston that direction. And this piston is attached to this rod? Yes. Uh, the, everything will, piece. So it will retract, yeah? Yes. All right. It screws on like that, or we... Yes. Anyway. Okay. It's not screwing on because I need to clean the thread. But... Okay, so... Again, you've got pressure on here. This is on there. That goes in there. So what's, what stops oil going under here? and leaking to the other side of this chamber. So... Oh, what's in there? There's a little o-ring in there that I okay. haven't taken out yet. All right, okay. So, so this is basically... does the job of... Keeping oil out through the, the set. Yeah, prevents oil inside. from leak high pressure oil, because we're talking thousands of PSI, right? Yep. From leaking past there, through there, yeah? And then losing power, or actually allowing this to actually creep and move in. All right, did you get that? Yeah. All right. That's it. So, how many pieces is this? This is a five-piece piston seal, which okay. is very common. All right, so explain how all the five, the, 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 the parts of the five-piece piston seal to us. So, this will start in the center. So, in the middle of this piston nut, there is a, a this is the seal, this is what is preventing the oil from escaping through the top of the, the outside of the barrel and around the top of the piston. Right, so it prevents oil from leaking through that way and prevents oil from leaking that way, correct? Yes, correct. All right. And... And this is, what's, what's this called? This is called a single or a double acting seal? This is a double acting seal. Double acting seal. All right, so there's a lot of movement there, so... What takes up all this movement? So it has some counterparts that that keep it in in centralised in the piston in the piston. Right. And these two are the first two ones on each side of the main seal, and that's all right. So, they, so that will take up most. Of, well, it yep. will take up all the space. All right. Just move it that way. Okay. So that's All right, so that is like a, it's almost like a backing ring, but it's a backing ring on either side of the O-ring, right? Yep. Yeah. And then what else? And then to keep Pre them in, to, from, pre to prevent? To prevent them moving at all. Uh, and what else? What else do these? And these also act as a wear band to stop metal to metal contact. So the wear bands prevent what? The metal, metal on metal the piston contact. and the metal from the barrel from rubbing against each other. Yeah. Right? Because right. we're only doing a light polish and that I have three teeth of my jaw that's gripping onto the onto the gland nut, I can chuck it in as it is. Alright, so and what sort of speed are you running out this? of the lathe, up to your start. Okay. Um, so Looking a lot better. There's a lot of corrosion in those grooves and we need to polish out. That way you've got, you, you give the seals the best chance to actually do their work, do their job, all right? Any roughness in either where the, the, web, where the rod seal goes or where the wear band goes and you're not gonna get a good sealing of the rubber to metal surfaces, yeah? So Seth's going to just spend a few minutes trying to get these looking as clean and as shiny as possible. And I'll get a bit of my emery paper. It's pretty rough. Coarse emery paper. Is that all we got? That's all we have. I've tried getting rods of this.
Um, I like to just curl it into like a little roll because that's how less chance of you getting caught in the lathe. And you want to make sure that all your shirt isn't actually anywhere near your lead screw because that would end really badly. And if you're wearing safety you're glasses. Wearing safety glasses. So you want to way. kind of keep yourself, keep this apron and everything, the tight and all the tool post away and make sure that when you put your finger in, you can quick, fingers in. quickly can get out. This is what I'll be cleaning now. All right. And what are those again? That's the O-ring and the backing ring. All right. So you're going to what are you going to do to that? Uh, it's going to be polished with a strip of emery paper. Looks like it's already been done. Yeah. Have you done it already? I may. I may have started. You may have started in your enthusiastic. Yeah. Okay. So show me um, what you did. I'm just going to show you the process. So you get your strip of emery paper. This is actually really important because you can get caught in the lathe and die if you don't do this properly so I get my maybe not caught in the lathe and die you can die but more importantly if you do it wrong you can lose this nice clean thumbnail that you see here right? yes <laughs> so I hold it with just pin just pinching each end because that's a quick way I'll show right. you to let go of it if it gets caught start the lathe <clears throat> I keep my hands away and then I'm just pinching because what happens if you get caught is it will do that. And Don't try and grab it now or what you're going to do? will get caught in that and you will get pulled in. So. Correct. Because this won't stop because this, there's a, a gearbox there and a motor down there and because of the speed range in the gearbox there's a massive amount of so torque I'll there now. I'll show you how to do this properly. It slides in and just kind of move it back and forth and then you can kind of start seeing it get it polished if you look underneath the paper and that's about enough. Clean. There you go. So now we're going to polish the web end. <coughs> web oh, end the web end grooves. So the web end grooves in there. All right. All right. Yeah. And that goes in there and sits in that groove just there. So we're going to get our emery paper. Sits in that groove just there. So the same thing. Rip off a bigger bit to kind of suit the groove. If you don't have a lathe at home and you have access to a drill, this is what I suggest, is getting one of these from Bunnings. They have a set. Well, your audience is North American. North so American, okay, you're going, going, who you're going to who Walmart, the F Bunnings or, yeah, Walmart home or Home Depot. Home Depot, yeah. And um, get yourself a series of these in different sizes, yeah. And then you put these into the drill. But yes, okay, you can I'll get, you can buy these, they're very, they're quite non-expensive non-expensive but these are a uh, high tensile steel wire so they can be quite aggressive so you need to be careful what you're doing with these and, and don't and not continue to polish for long periods of time so so what's happened now so we're about to reseal the cylinder okay with new seals okay I've brake cleaned all the components and I've Blasted them with air, okay. compressed air. All right. Are you going to need any special tooling to assemble at some this, of these components? At this point, no. Are you sure? I'm positive. I can get some tools that might be handy though. How are you going to get out into there? 
outside. So, what are you going to do now? These are some tools that may be necessary to installing your seals. Okay. Um, All right. So let's. So what are you going to do now? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my gland nut. Yes. And I'm going to start from the front of the gland nut with the installation of the rod seal. What I would do device. is a vise, yes. So okay. if you've got a vise, put some soft jaws in the vise. These are aluminium soft jaws. Yeah. Hold it quite firmly. So all of a sudden now you've got two hands to do the job. Start again. So it's a matter of... It's fiddly. Manhandling that seal. Okay, so I've got it in the, the groove. So it's in the groove. There you go. So somehow that big thing is now in that groove. So I'm going to keep it in. Right. I'm going to keep it in the vise now. So he's going to keep it in the vise. So the next thing is the rod seal. Wiper seal. Wiper seal. Oh, so the, rod, the blue thing is the rod seal. This is the wiper seal. So it's pretty self-explanatory, although to be sure that this wiper... This edge, edge yeah. faces the pointing up. Pointing up, so it's actually. Right, so wiping. these ones are a lot easier to get in. All right. This one is just a matter of. There you go. Right in. So that's so that's now in there. Now I'm going to and then pull this out, and I'm going to. You won't need this next step in the vise. So the next part is... So. This is the wear band. So this, this is the wear band. band. Nice and lubricated. So this thing is going to... I might have to actually squeeze it beyond its... So these are actually really, really hard to put in when you're lubricating them. Because they're so slippery. Sometimes you have to squeeze it... You have to make them smaller than the groove that they're going to go in there. Right. I would have kept that in the vise personally. So that is the inside of the gland knot. So you're going to make sure that's still nice and clean. All right. And, and then? And you're going to lube up the O-ring and backing ring groove. Okay. And then we're going to lubricate the O-ring and the backing ring. So what's important about that backing ring? That the backing ring stays to the back of the gland knot. So and that what else? What else is special about that the, backing this ring? Groove it on this side molded groove is facing towards the O ring. Yeah. Alright. So that's back stays back there and then this O ring. Goes over the top just like that. So okay. Okay, so that's done. The land nut is done. Complete. Alright. Now this is can sometimes be difficult. This next part you got an easy one though, no Teflon involved today. So. Alright. <clears throat> so lubricate your whole piston nut. Lubricate your seal. First thing to go on. And so this is a double acting seal, so I it can go on either way. Once it's really lubricated, you just kind of use your, both your thumbs. Alright. And then? And then, you lubricate your... You lubricate, so your first part is one of these little... Okay, so this is re you got to be really careful with this because you can actually snap them. It takes right. a bit, but you can snap them or bend them. So you kind of want to just 
there's a, a way to do it. Kind of just get it quickly and effectively. Pop it in like that. It's really the only way to get it in. Okay, awesome. good. Alright, you know what? We've Next. This. Then, oh yeah, okay, so this is quite important. This lip here is going to be locking on to the step up on this piston. Yep. So, that sits over the top like that. Alright. You've got to get it on somehow. Slippery little sucker. So, step is going against the stepper. Go on. Alright, what else? What about this part here? Where does that go? Oh, yes. So, the oh, yes. It's already well lubricated. Alright, so that's got to go into that groove there. And what does that O-ring do? This O-ring is what seals the oil from escaping through the... Through that shaft through the there. Shaft. Does it feel good? Yep. All ready to go together. All right, so there's your gland nut. Intermission. There's your piston seal. Did you clean this thread up like you said you were going to do? Yes. All right, cool. This has been polished. It doesn't yep. look very polished. Looks That's a all bit, been polished. It's been bit polished coarse. and wire wheeled. It's a bit coarse actually. It's been polished and wire wheeled. Mm -hmm. There's that damage. Alright. So what are you doing now? First, we're going to lubricate the rod. Alright. Thoroughly. And now lubricate. more lubricant again. Yes. I think you're a little a too liberal with that. Hang on. So you want to kind of roll it on and try not to damage. So that's the gland nut on. And you put it that far. Are well, your hands clean? Yeah. It doesn't look like it. It just looks like you left all these dirty fingerprints all over it. I think you've done something wrong here. What do you think? I've done wrong. What's going to hold this onto the end of the barrel? Okay. Alright. Really important. Okay, so, what's this part? This is the lo locking for the gland nut. Okay, so, alright. So that goes on first. And then. Then the gland nut. And that goes over there. Alright. Okay, and then... It's alright, it's a workshop. Noise is noise. Just start your third. Alright. Softly. I think you're holding those kind of backwards. Oh, Hold them the other way around. Yeah, but I need to jump over where you are. Okay. So. So you're going to do this up until the holes line up, is that correct? Okay. That's there. And then, what are you going to do? Soft jaws you're using on your beautifully clean... It's alright, we can always wipe it off. Make sure the roll pin is going. Up, so. This is going out to the world and...
inside Before you lubricate, the let's have a look inside the barrel. So I gave it a bit of a wire wheel and a, and clean out. But no hone because no the barrel hone. the barrel looks pretty good. No hone. All right. Yeah. Okay. So barrels are important. Yeah, they need to be clean, corrosion and rust free. All right. So now we're going to apply some spray lube down the barrel generously. And then the So you kind of got to feel it as you go in. You might need a mallet to... Oh, nope. Maybe not. That one went in relatively well. And so this might need a bit of a tap with a piece of aluminium. swap sides. So what are you using now? Just a pair of bills. Stilson. Lightly using or a pipe wrench. Doesn't need to be super tight because there's a grub screw going in again. It needs to be firm though, right? It needs to be firm. goes in there. Smidge. Seal it up firm. Nice. Okay. And that is... And now? We're going to go test it out. Test it on the test bench. On the test bench. 